Hi, today we've got a couple of relatively low cost benchtop multimeters to have a look at. Both of them are from East Tester. The one at the top is the ET3240, and the one at the bottom is the ET3255. And these are currently retailing on Banggood for $170 for the one at the top and $340 for the extra digit. Now there's a little bit of extra functionality on the bottom unit, but really the main difference that you're going to be looking at is that extra digit of uh, resolution. Now they do a six and a half digit multimeter, which has specifications quite similar to the Keysights and uh, the Fluke 8845A, but it is actually quite expensive. So I think it's going for somewhere near a thousand dollars. And at that point, I think you'd probably just want to go ahead and buy the real deal rather than one of these slightly cheaper units. So I've got these hooked up to Ian's PDVS2 Mini. And if you didn't see me do a review on this, I'll put a link above. Uh, I think he's uh, ramping up production now, so you should be able to buy these units. And this one now has the nice metal chassis that is going in the production version. And we're just having a little look here at what the accuracy appears to be like, just based on, uh, you know, some spot checks. So we're currently at one volt input, and you can see the top unit is reading one volt exactly, and the bottom one's just flickering there on the least significant bit. If we take it down a little bit, half a volt to 0 0.5 volts, you can see again they're pretty much correlating almost precisely to this, and Ian calibrated this with his uh, eight and a half digit multimeter. So it should be relatively spot on. Again, three and a half volts, pretty similar readings, just dropping very slightly low there on the final digit. And we'll just have a look at one more, a little bit higher up in the range. Nine and a half volts, 9.501 and 9.4989. So they're just drifting off very slightly there. I've checked this against my uh, Keysight multimeter and it's still pretty much bang on. So um, you know, we're well within the accuracy that these are specifying. So just having a look on the East Tester website, we've got a nice table which compares the two devices and their specifications. So we've got the three and a, four and a half digit 3240 just here. And basically the main difference is obviously that extra digit, but also we get quite a bit more accuracy on the five and a half digit multimeter. So you can see on the four and a half digit meter, Basic accuracy on DC volts is 0.05% plus three digits. On the five and a half digit meter, it's 0.015 plus three digits. So really quite respectable specifications. And it's a very similar story all the way down and all of the specifications. So that five and a half digit meter obviously has a better reference inside it. I'm not sure whether it shares the same PCB in its software unlock. So we will have a look inside shortly. Uh, but it can do DC volts, AC volts, DC current, AC current resistance, frequency due to cycle and capacitance. And then it does have a few extra statistical features along with uh, a USB port, which means that both of these are Skippy compatible. The five and a half digit meter is supposed to come with some software, but I can't find the CD anywhere. and I can't find a download for it, so I haven't been able to evaluate that. So these units are obviously in a desktop form factor. And you might wonder why you'd possibly want one when you already have some nice handheld multimeters. Now, these work fine for general measurements. The main thing is that I find is when you've got a couple of these, they're actually really quite difficult to store. You end up either having to stack them up and potentially scratch the display or keep them in their bags, which obviously means that you've got to keep bags around. And they're just, um, they work well for portable measurements or for a quick spot measurement, but these can quite happily sit on your workbench shelves out of the way and you've always got them there ready to go. Obviously you don't have to worry about the battery so you can leave them on all day uh, if you want to do readings all the time or if you want to connect it to your PC. Um, so there's several reasons why you might want a benchtop multimeter and these ones are not bad from my experience so far. I've had them for a couple of months now. I've been using them quite regularly and they do behave quite nicely. They're not really missing too many features compared to the key site, and obviously you can see that the accuracy isn't too bad. Uh, this one's just starting to drift off a little bit lower, but the wiring and everything is all over the place. We haven't got our shielded cables, and it is still warming up, so it might just be drifting down just a little bit. Uh, the one thing that is missing that would have been obviously nice on here 
is any kind of graphing features or that kind of thing. It does have statistics, as you can see, on the front panel, but there is no data logging built in. You can have a look at some other statistics and other ways of reading on the display. So you can get the Y equals MX plus C. So if you press uh, Enter, you can scroll through the Y equals MX plus C. They've done it as B. You can also do the reading in decibels if you want to, and you can set the reference voltage to which that is calculated. You can also do the reading in dBm's, and then everything else is fairly standard stuff. We'll just do a quick test with our precision resistor. So this is the 1K resistor, and you can see that's reading bang on 1K. Switch it around to the other side. And there we go, 10K pretty much on the nose. Let's have a look at the five and a half digit meter. And just reading very slightly under there. Let's have a look on the other side. And 1K pretty much exactly. So you can see the accuracy on these isn't too bad at all. Let's have a look at the continuity buzzer. It's a little bit slow. It's also quite quiet. Let's have a look at the top one and see if that's the same. Again, just a little bit slow, they do seem to behave exactly the same. I do wonder if they're based exactly on the same chipsets inside, um, so we'll have a look inside at the moment. One thing that I have noticed is it does have a very slightly odd configuration for the current measurement, so you can only use the first jack for up to 100 milliamps, which is going to catch you out uh, almost certainly. So they do provide about 400 milliamp fuses in the bag, I'm not sure why they've set it to that. The other one is 12 amps, um, so you're most likely to just want to stick it in there so that you don't accidentally keep blowing the 100 milliamp fuse. Now, interestingly, they do both have the same version number, so I'm wondering if there is something inside which just lets it know that it's the 3240 instead of the 3255, and I don't know if we're going to be able to fool this one into giving us that extra digit. You can also turn on the button beep or leave it off, change the backlight brightness, and you can also change the interface style. So I think you can scroll through these and have your interface in a few different colours. They're both in the standard desktop form factor, so getting on for 300mm deep. They've both got a tilting bail, and on, on the rear of the unit you've got your AC inlet, Interestingly, it only says 200 to 240 volts, but there is a switch here that allows you to change it to 110 volts. The 5.5 digit meter has the addition of an RS-232 output, wave output, and an external trigger. They both have USB connectors. The wave output on the back is an additional feature on the 3255. I'm not sure how useful it is, but it does allow you to output a square wave with 50% duty cycle anywhere from 1 hertz all the way up to 100 kilohertz. So we've got our 5.5 digit meter on the left here and the 4.5 on the right here. They both have the same configuration and they're both actually based upon the same mainboard. This one's just had a few extra modifications to make it capable of that extra digit. It's a little bit messy. I'll have a closer look in a moment. But basically what we've got is our IEC inlet at the back, which is fused. And then that goes off to the front panel, to the main switch, and then there's a plunger from the actual front panel here, back along the same wire to the actual EI transformer. We've got a proper earth lug coming in from the IEC terminal, and even the cable that goes to the power switch is shielded, and that shield is earthed. We've also got the earth going into the transformer, and I think that's going to a copper band uh, between the secondary and primary windings to improve the EMC performance. And if you have a little look further along, you can see we've got a fairly standard configuration of bridge rectifiers coming in from the transformer. And then we've got our standard regulators. So we've got a 7805, 7905 for our plus and minus 5 volt rails. And we've got another regulator here with the number scraped off. We've got some resistor networks towards the back, and this is partially what's been replaced on the 5.5 digit meter. We've got our relays for switching in and out of the different ranges, 
and then we've got a really interesting looking current shunt. So I'm not quite sure what this is made of, it's a really unusual material. I don't know if it's just been coated in something to protect it, but uh, it almost looks kind of fluffy in appearance, I've never seen anything like it before. Now unfortunately most of the devices have had their labels lasered off, so this is the reference chip, and there's a little bit more on the 5.5 digit meter. Here we've got the main multimeter chip, it has been lasered off, but there is remnants to suggest this is a microcontroller. It does say ARM very lightly on the top here, so they've missed slightly. So this is just a general purpose microcontroller, not a dedicated multimeter chip. So we have got what appears to be a programming header just here. And then you can see the full extent of a few of the bodges that they've got going on on the board. This goes off here into a little bit of circuitry. Both of the devices have the same mod here. And then we've got some 4051 analog switches, which are switching between these various resistors, presumably to switch between the various ranges. The front panel is fairly basic, and basically the heart of this is the STM32F103. Now, given that this is exactly the same size as the device on the mainboard, it's probably safe to say that they've used the same one on the mainboard. You can see that the layout's pretty much the same. We've got the programming header in the same place. Crystal pretty much in the same place, so I would assume that we've actually got the same part just placed twice in this unit. On the 5.5 digit meter we've got this infuriatingly wonky PCB which is attached to the main board. You can see it's got this CADOC precision resistor network on a ceramic substrate, a couple of resistors and then a couple of other parts. But yeah, you can see it's wonky. That isn't because the pins are bent, but actually because it soldiers through onto the main board using these two points here. And then we've got a couple of wires. These two go off to the voltage regulators. And then we've got a couple of wires going down onto here. So this appears to be replacing that network of MELF resistors. So we've got a higher Tempco uh, resistor network here, which is obviously giving us some extra precision. Now on the other multimeter, we only had this voltage reference, which has got the part lab uh, lasered off it. On this unit, we've got the Texas Instruments REF5025 as the reference. So this is presumably slightly higher in terms of performance. Still nothing that's going to set the world alight, but it's certainly not a bad voltage reference to have in your multimeter. The front panel PCB is absolutely the same, so using the same chip. I haven't been able to identify anything that tells it that it's a different multimeter that's connected. So... I'm assuming that although it had the same version number, there is something hard-coded into the code to tell it that it's the 5.5 digit meter rather than the 4.5 digit meter. So that's a little look at these two benchtop multimeters. The 4.5 digit meter I think is really quite a compelling purchase, so a reasonable price point, and actually the performance is really good, so even without that extra digit, the accuracy, I've not seen really any difference between the two, and this has been running for a couple of months now, and still seems to give absolutely bang on reading. So I've been really quite impressed with this unit. The user manual gives a really detailed guide on how to calibrate this if you have access to some decent calibration equipment. So, you know, it does have the ability to be used long term. You're not just stuck with a device that has been calibrated once and basically you're out of luck if you want to use it further. So this one I really do quite like, and I've had it for a couple of months now. Following getting this one, I went ahead and purchased the 5.5 digit meter, and I have to say I'm slightly more disappointed with this unit because you're paying quite a lot more money for it, and it's been hacked around basically to give it the specifications. Now, obviously sharing the same motherboard is fine, and most manufacturers will do that, but they haven't designed the PCB in the first place for the high-end unit. So they've had to bodge on all of these parts to get to the specification. I think that generally is not quite so good and also it does pose potential reliability issues longer term. So this one's a little bit more disappointing for me, although still for the price it's not, um, you know, the end of the world. You're not quite at the price point here, at least in the UK, where you could get something from eBay from Keysight, it's not quite there yet, so this is a reasonable intermediate step. So, you know, it still has its place, it's just that this one doesn't appear to be quite as well built because of the modifications. Now, I'll leave the link 
to the Banggood website where you can have a look at both of these units. Also the six and a half digit meter which they do sell. Now the six and a half digit meter is quite an interesting unit. I was sort of tempted to save up and buy that unit but it is quite expensive but it does have all of the features that you would get on your standard six and a half digit meter. There's a lot of stuff on the back of the unit and it is quite a fully featured unit and it has one really interesting feature in that it can be calibrated with just a voltage source and I think it was a resistor. All you need is a precision 10 volt reference and a resistor and it can do all of the internal calibrations for all of the other ranges from those two things which I thought was quite interesting. So maybe at some point in the future I'll pick that one up and have a look and see what that one's like too. So if you've got any comments or thoughts leave them in the comments section down below. Hopefully you found the video useful and until next time thanks for watching.